I'm Johnny Watts. I'm John Lawless. And we helped create Planet Coaster. Planet Coaster is quite simply about building a believable theme park. For me, it's also the experimentation that you get in building a world which is entirely yours. One of the things that was really stuck in my mind was this quote from Lego. Lego don't make plastic bricks. They give you the potential to make spaceships and castles. And this is exactly what we wanted to do with Planet Coaster, was to give people these tools to create their ideal theme park. It was a very emotional journey in many ways. This is a game we wanted to make since Roller Coaster Tycoon. What I really wanted to get across was how wonderful theme parks are. These early sketches, which are far too much about one individual character, they're almost like illustrations of our own enthusiasm to make the game. If we could, we would have made that thing in our backyard. Yeah. We wanted to make this game so much that we would do anything to make it. And that was kind of like the theory behind these early sketches. But as it progressed into the announcement trailer, it suddenly became about the park. And you know, we pulled it back from that character and said, it's still about this enthusiasm of that one little person who wants this park around them. It's interesting how we developed the star because it was actually incredibly rapid. We had a first set of quite simple line drawings and normally you know you, you take the line drawings they go through into a real final concept beautifully rendered but all 2D and we sketched the drawings out and then gave them to like Stefan our fantastic character artist and he took it straight into ZBrush and started to mock pretty much an entire family out based on these loose drawings and I think that energy is something that stayed with Planet Coaster. And also, there is a technical thing, is that we have thousands of them on screen, and so we needed to go for a style which was conducive to being able to render so many people. If you could draw a character which was actually quite simply defined with a strong silhouette, you knew that when that person is, is small, that all their facial... They can emote. Facial, yeah, they can emote and you can see their emotions. So you know, later on when we had uh, fantastic reactions to coasters passing by, they were like, yelling and screaming and so madly happy. The animators and the art directors talk a lot about what characters are coming up and like any fantastic animator we're kind of full of them. The next thing they'll do is try and gather reference. That reference is about not only filming that happening, but the byproduct of filming that happening is you start to feel the characters. The animators who are going to be animating that particular character, they'll be the ones who are acting this stuff out. So when they're watching the reference of themselves doing it, they can see that performance and get that emotion. It's easy to look at what we do in terms of reference and think that we're just having a bit of a laugh. But some of these entertainers, you have to feel what it's like. So these guys grabbed a space hopper so we could start bouncing around to really entertain the crowd. <laughs> and the reason being is that you have to replicate someone who's been inside a suit for the past six months and been gone through all the training. So now they're a cosmic cow. They're bouncing around. Well, we've actually it. talked to some real theme park entertainers yeah. and they take the job incredibly professionally. They get the vibe of a real theme park and our entertainers need to do exactly the same. I think when you see Captain Lockjaw in the park, he has that slight awkwardness to his walk. When he takes that big rise there, it feels like he's dragging a nice it's big believable. Up. Yeah. We create believable worlds. And that's only because Nick's felt it, and it's only because those guys have watched it. Rides are really important, and this is quite interesting. There's a juxtaposition between the beautiful art and flavour that we're putting in to the unbelievable accuracy that we're putting into the ride simulation. Our artists have really gone for immense detail, studying all the latest rides out there. All the rides and especially the coasters are driven with real physics. We even model the rivets on it. The bolts, the rivets, the actual structure and the mechanism. We spend a lot of time caring about what happens if you turn a coaster car over because you want to see all the, you know, the actual trucks on the wheels. That has to be authentic. One of the things we've always tried to push for in Planet Coaster is that ability to show that you've got the front facing theme side of the world. Underneath that, there's the machine. There's this machine which is there, whether it be a coaster, a flat ride or whatever, you can see the reason why that works. You've got the cosmetic and then you've got the functional side and that almost runs like a thread through the whole of that game. And the management is strong, presentation is strong. So, community. The community. All I'm going to say first <laughs> is Wow. Yeah, I think we never truly expected the invention. The way they would use the freedom and the tools, we couldn't have hoped for anything more. I think it hit the dream. Do you know what's most amazing about all this is that you see the really authentic looking parks, parks that could absolutely exist in the world and they'd hold together, they're well managed, and then you get these kind of incredible, fantastical worlds because, you know, we made it so you could build thousands of tons of earth hanging in the air, as you can see here, but those same tools are exactly what allows you to build some beautiful desert. But that there is made out of like sort of 20,000 
20,000, 30,000 pieces. The amount of time they've spent making these are, are measured in almost hundreds of hours, definitely. Well, these are places I'd like to visit. Yeah, there's a recent one by, um, by Costa Code, the Faraway Park, which is mind-blowing, because it, it does everything we wanted people to do in, in many ways. The idea that you've got different zones around your park and each one has a different feeling. What's amazing is we supplied, what, five themes, let me say, in the base game, and I think we barely ever saw a theme being used straight. It's like staring into a mirror of happy joyfulness when you're, when you're creating stuff and you've got people in that world also reacting to what you're doing. And also you're making money out of those people as well to profit and make more and more. That's exactly it. It's about the creativity of these beautiful themed places. But from a management point of view, what you're doing is creating a machine to extract money out of people. There is a simulation behind it all, joining all that creativity together. Yeah, you're making the perfect trap. One of the things that we did very early on as part of the simulation was really to go back to first first principles. Before we made roller coasters, before we even did the piece by piece, we worked on the guest simulation. Each guest has to physically get onto a ride or go to a shop to spend their money. And with that first principle, you have lots of emergent behaviors. So if you can really work on the guest brain to make sure that they're making their decisions, complexity follows out of it. It also means that the player really understands right from the get-go that you need to look after your, your customers. From that, visually, the kind of visual design of the game is driven by the guest brain. It's making you believe in the thought process of these people. So we knew early on that we didn't want people to intersect. They had to walk around each other. And that became yes. part of the gameplay itself. Pathways are like the veins through your park. Real parks, they have all the gentle rides close mm -hmm. and a really big more extreme coasters further away to draw people through yeah. it is all about people distribution and getting your park filled up and that's what we managed to sort of implement from these really clear and concise principles whenever you make a game or whenever we've made a game you hope that is going to resonate with with the community the people you know you're making the game for you never know it's just so pleasing that people are experiencing and enjoying something that we've made we made this really complex game back in 2003, Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, mm. and you know, had people moved on, did they want games which were not as sophisticated? I guess we were very lucky because games like Prison Architect and City Skyland showed that there was a market for it. People are ready to really experience complexity and embrace it. So some general tips. It's passion, you know, we go to the theme parks, our animators are jumping up and down on, on space hoppers. It's getting this belief that you know what you're doing, you have a vision of how to achieve it, and then just all working together. Yeah, find something that you're passionate about and that you want to bring to it, whether it be an experience or a story or whatever. And then whatever engine you're using, get that in there quickly. Feel the core feature of that game. And if something doesn't go in because it doesn't feel right, that's made the game better. You look after the game and that yeah. game will look after you. Work out what you're precious about. Yes, yes.